Hi, welcome! So in this video, I'm just going to go through an example of finding a Riemann sum when we're given discrete data points. So discrete data points might sound like a lot, but the discrete word means basically just individual, like specific individual data points. And so you often see this when we have a table of values or some sort of like individual measurements that have been taken and we're trying to do a Riemann sum with them. So for this example, let's suppose you have the following data and you want to find the approximate area under the curve that it creates. So we use Riemann sums to approximate area, and we do this with either a left, right, or midpoint Riemann sum. I'm going to ask us to do the left and the right Riemann sums, and before we start doing that, let's just get the data that we're going to be using. So I'll write it here, but for the x's, we have 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. And for the outputs, the f of x, we have 10, negative 7, 13, 2, and 20. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to find the left Riemann sum and the right Riemann sum, and let's do four subintervals or four rectangles. So that L sub 4 means a left Riemann sum with four rectangles, and the R sub 4 means a right Riemann sum with four rectangles. So here, if we're using some of the notation that I frequently use, we have n is equal to 4, that's the number of rectangles. And then to find our delta x, we're going to take the difference in our two endpoints. So if a is 2 and b is 14, we're going to do b minus a. So we have 14 minus 2 over n, which is 4. That's 12 over 4, which is just 3. So this is the width we're going to have for each rectangle. And honestly, the data was picked to work this way. If you look at the difference between each of the inputs, we go up by 3. So from 2 to 5, we go up by 3, 5 to 8 up by 3, 8 to 11 up by 3, and then 11 to 14 up by 3. So this data works specifically this way. At this point, we're just giving you nice numbers that work easily for this. If the data points were at different intervals, like you couldn't just count by 3 between each one, this would involve some more complicated methods, and this is just the beginning of how this method works with the Riemann sums. We have much more complicated ways to do this in more complicated settings. But okay, back to our problem. This works for us. So we have n is 4 and delta x is 3, and this is the number of rectangles and the width of each rectangle. So if I'm doing the left Riemann sum, that's going to be the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of f of x sub i times delta x. So remember, we're starting at the leftmost endpoint, so that's why we start at 0, and we go up to not the last endpoint, but the one right before it, so that's the n minus 1. Then we have the output, that's the f of x sub i, and it's being multiplied by the width, so it's like a height times a width. So, okay, we're adding up all of these areas, their heights times widths, and we have from i equals 0 to n minus 1. Then for the right Riemann sum, this is going to be similar, but instead we're going to start our sum at i equals 1, so we're starting at the right endpoint, and we're going all the way to the last endpoint. So we go up to n, and it's the same thing that we're summing, f of x sub i times delta x. So to help us put in all these values, I'm just going to label the data in our table. So the first point is x sub 0, x sub 1, x2, x3, x4. That's from a to b. And then our outputs are just f of whatever that input was. So f of x sub 0, f of x sub 1, etc. Then I just have to sort of put all this information into the Riemann sum formula. Now, you really don't need to write out all of these complicated formulas in order to do this problem well, as long as you sort of know it's the output times the delta x each time. I'm just writing them out so you can sort of see the whole thing, everything that's going on behind the scenes, so you can see all of it, but truthfully, you might not be doing every single one of these steps when you're doing it on your own. You might just sort of jump to what we do next. But just to fill in a little more information first, for our left Riemann sum, we're going from i equals 0 to 3, so x sub 0 to x sub 3, and then our delta x is 3. Then for the right Riemann sum, we're starting at i equals 1 and then going to 4. So that's x sub 1 through x sub 4. And again, the delta x is 3. So let's focus on the left Riemann sum first, and we're just going to write out all those values. So we sum up from 0 to 3 on the i's. So we have f of x sub 0 times 3 plus f of x sub 1 times 3 plus f of x sub 2 times 3 
plus f of x sub 3 times 3. So I'm just putting in 0 through 3 in for the i's. Then using my data, I have that the x sub 0 output is 10, the x sub 1 output is negative 7, then 13, and 2. So I'm just following that through from the table. I'm also going to factor out the 3, the delta x, since it's in all of these, and I can just multiply it by it at the very end. So when I add everything up inside my parentheses, I'm getting 18. So I have 3 times 18, which is 54, as the value for my left Riemann sum. Let's repeat this process for r sub 4. I'll try to go through this one a little more quickly since it's really similar. So again, I plug in i equals 1 through 4 in for my i's. I'm going to factor out the 3 once I've written that all out. And again, this factoring out the 3, you might just be kind of jumping to this step if you're doing these problems on your own. I'm just trying to show you everything that's going on. So you do the 3, that's the delta x, times the output values using the right endpoints. So I'm starting at the output for x sub 1, that's f of x sub 1, which is negative 7, then 13, 2, and 20. When I add this up, I get 3 times 28, which is 84. And so that's the value of my right Riemann sum. Then, altogether, we have our two answers. We have the right Riemann sum is 84, and the left Riemann sum is 54. All right, so that's just an example of how to find the right and left Riemann sums when you're given discrete data points. For us, that meant we were given a table of data to use to find our Riemann sums. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.